So the last building we're going to tour right now is the Western Auto Building. As you can see, um, it's a very long building. It was the original Western Auto Building. And the reason I say that is that um, in the 80s, when I was a little girl, the Western Auto Building was on the other side of town, uh, down where the tire place is. Uh, but this was the original building. And as you can see, it's kind of the same thing as windows broke instead of replacing them with the correct sizing, they often just framed them in. This one they framed in entirely, the middle one, and took it out. Um, I really love these, uh, they're, they're like a ceramic, but they're like a glossy black tile. And as you can see, there's like one missing right there. And there's been some debate with John and I on if those were original to the design of the building or they came later. Um, I wanted to kind of move them around because I wanted to keep them, but John says he's found some of these tiles inside the building as well. So we're not sure if they're tiles that fell off or extra tiles that they had, but he thinks that they were added later because they have this um, like metal trim on it that he says was probably like more 50, 60, 70s. So this building has what was, a, um, when I lived here upstairs in this front apartment that we'll see later, this was the Adelphia office. Adelphia was later bought out by Comcast, but I would come in here and pay my cable bill and I lived upstairs. And there's things about this building that I never knew till we bought it and started kind of uh, crawling around in it. So let's, uh, let's go inside. This is the driest building. <laughs> there's not very much um, problems with it as far as water, but this would have been the Comcast office. Now, it looked, this side was even more piled up, but it was piled from this side to that side. And as you can see, there's still a lot of stuff in here, but this was the Adelphia Comcast office. And so this was really as far as I'd ever been in this building. So I knew there were apartments here. And uh, so the first day that we came in here, we knew there was a drop ceiling. This is a small, what we'd also probably call like an efficiency apartment. This is a one room. It's a one room like kitchen, living room. And then this room is just a bathroom, a bedroom, and a closet. And they all have those windows because of course you had to have windows in every room. So these are, um, the windows that um, exist now. And it looks like at some point, um, the, they're the wood windows, but it looks at some point like somebody came in and built all this out. And we could tell all this part was like a newer paneling, but we were trying to figure out exactly why they repaneled everything in here. And we finally figured it out when we went toward the back of the building. There's one more little tiny apartment, and actually, um, this is really tiny. John's already done some demo in here, so I'll show you what was here maybe before, but there's a bathroom, and this was their little kitchen area. There was a wall about right here, so this was your like little setting area. There was a wall here, and you can see this stud here. There was a wall here and a wall here, and this was the bedroom, and that's as big in this closet space here, and that was as big as this unit was. And they've taken that wall out because we've decided to remove the commercial space or rather the office space in the front and the bedrooms because once we made it back to this level, we learned some secrets. This is a stair that goes to, um, this is a staircase that goes to the basement. We'll go down that way later. This was that bedroom that I told you got torn out. And this room was absolutely piled full of junk. And as you can see, there's a ton of wires, I think he's even taken some of them down. So when we got back to this area, we realized that there was a mezzanine level to this building as well. And I never knew this was here. Um, there's an original window that has been cinder blocked up. And this is uh, an exterior door that you couldn't even get to. And they have, uh, we have a dumpster out there because they've been slowly clearing everything out. There's a bathroom that was in here. This looks built in later as well. Um, you can tell, but this is the mezzanine level staircase. And this is where 
some secrets of this building kind of came to be known that I didn't even know existed. So this is the original, or one of the originals, the staircase up front might have also been used, but there's a back staircase. And as you can see, they built right over it, so you can no longer access the second floor from this. But this is the original ceiling here. It's metal, and as you can see, all of those apartments and all of that office space was added in. Now this wouldn't be allowed now by building code, I'm told. You could not do this to a first floor space. It would have to remain commercial. But you can see, they literally left the light fixtures in and there was just this faux ceiling here. So you could have literally jumped through the roof on somebody. But when we saw this and saw the ceiling and all of this, when you see all this trim work, our plans changed immediately and we decided we couldn't use the downstairs for apartment space. We would be grandfathered in if we wanted to do that, but we want to turn this back into retail space because the retail space, of course, is important for uh, Appalachia to contribute to the tax base. We found all kinds of unusual items. I posted a picture of those to Facebook when my husband sent them to me because it cracked me up. But you can see there's some... Um, Here's the, the door that we were looking at downstairs. And here's the original like headstone for it. But there's been some deterioration, so this has got to be fixed. But let's go back down here, and I want to show you another secret that we found out. Uh, we just came back down the mezzanine stairs, and as you can see, I told you earlier, there's all this crazy wiring. And uh, when we got permission to turn <laughs> the power on, we told Old Dominion that we wanted to be here at the time because... Um, we didn't know what would happen because you can see it's all just a mess. And they turned it on, we weren't here, and they did actually almost burn the building down. That's another story for another day. But that night when we came in here and started looking at things, one of the things that we realized, if you can see, is at some point there was more than likely an electrical fire. And as you can see, they've come in with new boards and put them in against the charred boards and this fire goes all the way back. It was a fairly good sized fire. You can see that all these beams that are black on this side burned in this area. And they came in and they basically buddied these new joists in to the burned uh, beams and repaired it. So the first time we were in here and just kind of looking at things, we didn't have any power, but after we had some light in here and came back in to check things out, that was something we noticed and that's kind of cool because this happened a lot in older houses that and and buildings that actually caught fire quite a bit but they could get it out pretty fast because somebody was usually always around but yeah you can see and john says that it more than likely did start on this wall because this charring under these boards is the worst part of it so so that was kind of a cool fact also that we didn't know so right here um this is, I can't believe how much they've already cleared out of this, but this is the basement steps. Um, you know, the Western Auto Building had this floor. It also had a basement. You can see really good view here of the ceiling because we've got some lights working here. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much they've gotten rid of already. So, so all of this area was full and if you walk back through here there was just this little tiny path and this is what it looked like all the way from the state well actually they've cleaned some of this up too it was worse than this but if you'll come back here I'm going to show you something cool in this back side you can just see it's just like years and years of junk it's like its own little landfill and back in this corner first of all someone stole a chair from the ahs band room that's probably like first chair maybe second chair <laughs> if you're a band person you'll get that joke but back in this corner, if you come in here, you can see there's this kind of channel area. 
And what we're trying to determine, we don't think it's where they put the coal in. We think this was actually something with um, lines, water lines, but there's a tunnel here. So, um, but these are just like support beams and there's not really a furnace area. It's back on the other side. So we're not really sure, but it, it's street level. It goes out to the street level. So crazy clutter. I mean, like we have good moldy furniture, pageant trophies, books. There's some good furniture, wood stuff, but mostly it's just a lot of junk and they've probably already cleaned. They've cleaned out a good portion of it already. They're moving faster than even I expected. So this is cool. Um, she's taking this. This is some display. It, it says Kiwi Spray Instant Shine 259. And I think that might be like a, might have been like, these might have been the shelves that were over in the F&F building. Because this is like a cabinet. And... <clears throat> And if you come back in this side, you can see this is your back room. There's your furnace. More crazy lines everywhere. And kind of a back room in here. I think John looked in here. I didn't, oh, here's more coal. You can actually look in here. This was the coal room, the coal chute. And they've got... So there's your coal and that's where they would have dumped it in. That is street level. Um, and they've actually got some concrete down in that area right now, but we're gonna try to uh, dig it out. But that's the basement. So um, now we're gonna go up to the top floor of the Western Auto Building, which is apartments now and will stay apartments, but we kind of found some secrets up there too. And like I said, I lived in this building. So a lot of these things were complete surprises to me because I didn't know things about this building that we found out later. So we've got power to this building, but um, this carpet was not here when I was here before. But there's a lot of paneling and stuff. So we're not sure if this staircase, some of this wood that looks like here looks older, but the paneling, of course, is not. So we think this whole staircase was built in later to give access to the apartments that we're building upstairs. There's three apartments up here right now. And uh, there's this hallway kind of area, drop ceiling, paneling. This is the, oh, there's some light in here. This is the first apartment I ever rented. I'm pretty sure that's the same fridge that was in there. Um, there's this bedroom. And uh, my son was actually in here, but this uh, window goes to the top of what was Sue's dress shop. And when I lived here, I used to worry about what I was gonna do if there was a fire, because as you saw, there's only one staircase now. It was much cleaner when I lived here. We had a washer and dryer here. Um, I don't, I think the paneling was white maybe then too, but we only had a shower. We didn't have two toilets. <laughs> Um, but a lot of this was built in later. Uh, we can tell this is like sheetrock that was put in. And if you remember from the front of the building, right in the middle of where this wall is, is where one of those boarded up windows are. But from inside here, they framed up the windows, but you can look and see, um, right here that there's your, there's your kind of a uh, ledge there, but they fr framed all that in. So these are not the original size of the windows that would be in this space. And then this one had a bedroom here with a closet. And um, actually, I'm pretty sure that carpet was here when I lived here. And that was the carpet that was through the whole house, the closet carpet in 1997. So, <clears throat> and this uh, tile in the floor was in here too. Not much has changed. This apartment's actually in pretty good shape. Um, it's a, like a small efficiency apartment, drop, drop ceiling. Kind of has just a, uh, yeah, it's old. So basically what happened is somebody that moved out of here left every eye of that stove on and the oven. And when the power got turned on, um, 
the grease in here was smoking and there's metal, sheet metal, as you can tell. That's probably the only reason it didn't catch fire because this part was bubbling when the fire department and I entered the building because they happened to hear a smoke alarm going off because the fire station is right over there. Um, and in 20 more minutes, I think it would have been burned up because they were supposed to call us when they turned the power on and they didn't. Well, he did, he proved to me later that he did, but they, somebody gave him uh, the phone number with one digit off. So this is a small bedroom and a bathroom. I love this, I don't know why, but I actually love this tile on the floor. It's a really old linoleum and uh, I just think it's got a cool pattern, but it's damaged, so it'll get replaced. And, and right now we do intend to keep the upstairs floor <clears throat> as apartments. We're tearing out all those apartments downstairs. That's gonna become retail space and go back up to the um, ceiling level. But this third apartment is where we found what was a surprise to me because I didn't know not a lot about the history of this building, but when you get in here, this apartment was actually being gutted and renovated before we bought it. And we walked in here and you look up and look at the ceiling above this drop ceiling. So this building was not meant to be what's almost a complete apartment building now. It was originally a two-story retail of some sort. I don't, I'm sure it was something before the Western Auto, but so we're kind of conflicted about <laughs> what we're doing with all this space, but this is uh, the exact replica of the apartment up front. It's got a bedroom there, a bathroom there, a bedroom here and a kitchen and there's a little pantry here and this is built around um, if you come over here in this corner you can look so they just basically build around what was probably the original uh, one of the original um, chimneys that's the word I'm trying to think of but look at the look at the metal and look at the trim work and stuff there to me, like that was the biggest surprise. I lived here and I never knew that all of that was right above me. And it's really cool. See from here you can see there's like, that's about a four foot difference between that drop ceiling. And you can see right up through there, you can actually see kind of the um, eaves going up to the roof. But this, look at this right in the middle. Can you see that? That was the center of the building. So they had this like, I don't, I, I don't know all the architectural terms, but I'm gonna say that's a cornice maybe, right in the middle. And I don't see any lighting in here um, from this side, but it does look like there's some hanging down there. But, but this was like a big surprise. So now we're kind of conflicted about what to do with the second floor. We think we're just gonna turn it back into apartments. Um, because I'm not sure about the use for two stories of retail space, but it also might make a good restaurant space because you could do private events upstairs. But that original staircase probably came out somewhere around here. And we won't know until we pretty much tear the floor up from wherever that staircase ends. We won't know where it came out, but you would have come th to the back of the store and then come up these steps and there would have been this whole second level so so those are the secrets of the what we refer to as the western auto building so that's a tour of what we call the original western auto building and we are trying to look for more uh, pictures of these buildings and get more history on them but i uh, hope you enjoyed these tours of the building a shout out to just adventure productions for coming out and helping us get some video for the archives of this and follow us uh, on social media appalachian rising ventures and there's more to come thanks